Well, the force has been strong with this one, but don't worry, no one's ever really gone. <laughs> Greetings, folks. This is Joseph A. Sabora. And yes, I finally saw the final installment in the sequel trilogy of the franchise that's part of the Skywalker saga, simply called Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yep. It's a story about you know, Ray, Finn, and Paul Damien as they lead the Resistance final stand against Kylo Ren and the First Order, which eventually becomes the return of the deceased Galactic Emperor, Popultine. Yes, which we last saw him in Return of the Jedi, or at this rate... Revenge of the Sith. You know, both of which are from the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. How? I don't know. I mean, they just come up with new ideas to destroy this wonderful franchise. Uh, keep this in mind. Yes, there's going to be spoilers, all included. So, if you haven't seen this movie... Don't watch the review. But if you're curious enough, well, you'll be warned. Because it ain't going to be pretty. But if you have seen the movie, then you don't have to worry about that. But hey, that's the least of my worries. Because it's going to get there. The movie stars Carrie Fisher and her, and yet another final performance, sadly. Uh, Mark Campbell, yeah, returns. Uh, Adam Driver, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Anthony Daniels, uh, Naomi Ake, um, Domino Gleason, Richard e. Grant, Lupita Nanyo, Carrie Russell. Yes, as we all know, she was in um, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, Felicity, among others. Juna uh, Sotamo, Kelly Marie Train, Ann McDiamid, and Billy D. Williams, which also features other roles that to join in including Harrison Ford in an uncredited role. Yes, he returns. How? Well, you'll find out. With uh, Billy Lord, who happens to be Carrie Fisher's uh, daughter. Greg uh, Grunberg. They also got Dominic Monahan, Jimmy V, Nick Killian, Amanda Lawrence, um, among others. So, of course, you'll be able to hear all the voices if you're familiar with the story or any other. So they're all there. Okay. It's written by J.J. Abrams, who just returned directing this movie. With Chris Terrio. Um, that's part of the story that's joined in with Derek Connolly, Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, the writer of and director of Safety Not Guaranteed. The Jurassic World, which has producers Kathleen Kennedy joining in with J.J. Abrams and the show Y. Wong, and it's directed by, of course, J.J. Abrams. The movie begins when the deceased Galactic Emperor Palpatine, played by Ian McDiamid, had finally came back from the dead, already revived, and cites the scent a fret of revenge. While Kylo Wen, on the other hand, who is played by Adam Driver, of course under the name of Ben Solo, Pancake Face, obtains a Sith Wayfinder that leads him to an uncharted planet called Exgal. And that's when he found him, who reveals that 
Snark was just a puppet that Palpatine created in order to control the First Order by luring Kylo into the dark side. Therefore, he unrevealed a secret armada of the Star Destroyers and tells him to find and kill Rey, played by Daisy Ridley, who continues uh, her Jedi training under the resistance leader of Leia Organa, played by Carrie Fisher, at Aljon Kloss. Uh, therefore, Finn and Paul Damien, you know, who was just inside the Millennium Falcon with Chewbacca just playing you know, a, <laughs> a chess game with the monsters, they deliver an intel from a spy that Palpatine is on the Excal. So Ray has learned that Luke Skywalker's notes, and of course Luke Skywalker played by Mark Hamill, that the Sith's Wayfinder can actually lead them there. So it was up to Ray, Finn, Poe, Chewbacca, BB-8, and C-3PO to depart from the Millennium Falcon all the way to Pasana, where Luke's search for the Excal had ended completely. And once they made it there, they actually accounted Lando Carissian, played by Billy D. Williams. Yeah, just helped him out after he just killed uh, one of the stormtroopers. And yes, the stormtroopers actually has jetpacks so they can fly and go after them. So, which we're going to talk about that. Uh, he points them to where the Wayfinder is, which happens to be at that particular location. And hoping that uh, Lando should tell Ray that you know, about Leia, you know, about his love to her. <laughs> but of course, Ray told him to save yourself. Well, <laughs> well, for obvious reasons. So of course, they're being attacked by the stormtroopers. Yes, they can fly now. So they're going around attacking them while they're riding on the ship to escape. And just when they finally made it there. Yeah, as one of the sword troopers crashes, even one that explodes, they landed straight into the quicksand. And that's where they wound up going inside the cave, where all of a sudden they found, hard to believe, a snake creature, which then, um, of course, they had the lightsaber, well, Wei has the lightsaber, <laughs> Poe has the, the flashlight. <laughs> And they're about to search where, where the uh, Wayfinder is. And, well, the, yes, they found the, the snake-like creature. Ray actually helped them out. So that way the snake will escape. I mean, just when you were afraid that he was going to attack her or attack the rest. Yes, Ray did use the Force Bond to travel there to the War Suburbanites, which is known as the Knight of Ren. So Ray and the others had discovered the remains of the Jedi Hunter named OK, the ship. And they also found the dagger that actually has some written names that might explain in different languages. I mean, C-3O was trying to uh, translate, but unfortunately, even though he knows, he just can't reveal it out. So, yeah. And that's what happened be before that. Um, so yes, the group had escaped, uh, they're about to sit so, they found the, the ship that's somewhere around the area, they're about to go up, then, then all of a sudden Chewbacca got captured by the stormtroopers, and now Rey, on the other hand, had to, had to stand still waiting to find out because he just um, got a message from Kylo Ren about that Palpatine had came and he was ready to kill her just to let him know so this is going to be a warning but anyway she waited she got her lightsaber the ship was about to come you know which is Kylo Ren inside she's about to she's nice to do a flip try to cut down the ship with the lightsaber and crashes but Kylo Ren suddenly um, got out of the ship it's already in flames not not even a single scar 
that I can think of that's on, her, on his face, unless it's just a little bit of it. And just when um, Chewbacca, along with the, the stormtroopers and the rest of the the, the first order uh, soldiers around, um, they're about to leave on the ship with both um, Finn and, and Poe are about to ready to leave through that ship they found. Um, Ray decided to use the Force to grab the ship. Kylo Ren was doing the same here. And then all of a sudden, the ship explodes. Thinking that Ray actually killed Chewbacca. Yeah, Chewie. And I'm going to be honest though, I saw this movie twice. I clearly walked out during the first screening. Yeah. Because I was already feeling disappointed. I was like, man, the story was like already starting to piss me off already. You know, everything just seems to go on as fast as it can. And already the script is already getting fucked up. But this time I saw the rest of the film. So now I want to be able to find out what happened. So, there you go. So, let's get back to that. But it turns out that Chewbacca actually lives. He was actually transported to another ship, or what seems to be. Maybe they transported directly to it. I mean, maybe they used some different kind of force. I don't know. It just somehow happened. But all I can say was thank goodness, because I'm just getting tired of seeing another character die. But, uh, but let's not get further there. There's a lot of worse things going to happen. Anyway, Paul, when they um, when they uh, found out about this, uh, Paul suggested to travel all the way to Kajimi to have the Ceph text extracted from C-3PO's memory. Which yes, th this was a bit of a screw up because they're trying to find out where is it located. So they had to hire a uh, one of those uh, creatures to actually fix him and see maybe they'll find where the directions are. But then they they totally screwed up his memory and so bad that now it almost looks like C-3PO had lost, has now suffers from amnesia. So he doesn't even know who he is. So that was a pretty, that was pretty messed up. Um, so then, so already Ray has sensed that Chewbacca is alive, so thank goodness. So the group have mounts a rescue mission, while Kylo searches for Ray, and the group interrogates his Star Destroyer with the help of a, a girl named Zorai Bliss, who's played by Carrie Russell. Which, at this rate, she's the acquaintance of Poe, you know, they got to know each other ever since... Um, you know, they were working together. Yeah, they sort of like bond with each other. I mean, they're not getting along at times. And yes, he also keep. She also goes around calling him Star Trash or something. <laughs> anyway, Ray discovers a dagger and has a vision of her parents being eventually being killed with it. But Kylo informs her that, and this is the biggest um, reveal of them all. That she's actually Palpatine's granddaughter. Yeah. So the Sith Lord had ordered Alki to recover Rey as a child, but her parents had hit her somewhere straight to Jakku to protect her. So yes. And then next thing you know, um, they were all trapped. Just when they're about, just when Poe and Finn were about to. Uh, uh, go after all these uh, stormtroopers and the rest and save Chewbacca they were trapped you know by General Hux and and the rest um, that also includes uh, um, that also includes um, General Pride you know, Allegiant who happens to be the high ranking general in the First Order who's played by Richard E. Grant so, well, General Hux, uh, played by Domino Gleason, well, 
he decided to join in with the rest of the stormtroopers who actually killed them. And he decided uh, to let me do it. Because I, I want to watch this. Well, here's a big surprise. It turns out that General Hux actually saved Poe, Finn, and of course Chewbacca by killing them and pretending that, well, he was about to um, kill them all right, but then, act, but eventually he got shot. So yes, this was like a decoy here. So yes, he told Finn to actually shoot him in the leg, so that way you know they will know that they escaped, and he tries to stop them. But yeah, because apparently yes, he reveals himself as a spy. And the main reason why he did that was because he hates Kylo Ren and he wants to become the leader of the First Order. I can't stand him. So yes, he, he permitted them to escape from the Falcon, but of course, he's been discovered and was executed completely. You know, by, um, you know, by General Pride. Um, anyway, they arrived at Kier Bear, where Ray located the Ray Finder on the remains of the second Death Star. Yeah, because they wanted to come up with another plan. Because I know they're going to destroy it once again. I mean, what's the point of that? But she had a vision of herself as a Sith. Yes, because now we begin to see her, you know, with um, dreaded teeth um, during that battle between her and, and Kylo Ren, you know. The lightsaber battle, um, because apparently Kylo destroyed the Wayfinder and duels her completely. But then, wow, this is going to be probably the saddest moment that I'm going to be able to face, and I know this is going to happen anyway. For no reason at all, because. You know, during the fight scene, you know, which at the time they, they found the, they're, they're going all the way to find where it's located and, you know, they, they drive along with the, um, the Millennium Falcon and um, we also meet um, a Janna, who turns out to be a former stormtrooper of the First Order that's living on the planet of Cape Burr. Um She's played by Naomi Aki. So at least we now know that Finn wasn't the only one. But anyway, back back to the story. Because um, this is the biggest shocker of them all. Is that Leia committed suicide during the lightsaber battle. For no reason at all. But I guess it's because, well, he pop, she probably just wanted to set uh, Kylo Ren. He just probably wanted to destroy Kylo Ren completely and just become Ben Solo. So, so now, and if that wasn't enough for that alone, there is another surprise that we actually did get to see the memory of Han Solo played by Harrison Ford in an uncredited role and he actually explains to Ben that yes Kylo Ren is dead but he found out that his mother died but I guess maybe she did it because you know just for um, his own safety. So now Kylo Ren is dead of course. Um, I know he had that mask on that's that's all put together you know they hired a, an ape to actually uh, put it all together so he'll be exactly the way he is. So. And there's even a scene where he actually crushes uh, one of the uh, the generals and, and just throws him on top of the roof which is very similar to the scene in A New Hope, you know, with Darth Vader. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, I know. 
it's, it's too much. So, okay, so he throws away his lightsaber, he reclaims his identity as Ben, and Palpatine has one of the his super laser equipped Star Destroyers to obliterate Kajimi. So, the group return directly to the Resistance base. R2-D2 had revealed a signal from Rey. So the Resistance had, had followed the coordinates to Excal, where she confronts Palpatine and demands that she kills him to transfer his spirit into her. So Lando, so with the help of Lando to bring all the reinforcements of all the rest of the crew, while well, you know Poe and and the rest of the other um, resistant base uh, joins in to to stop um, the first order and destroy them while we're in, in the middle of of uh, Palpatine stealing both um, you know Ray and Ben's uh, souls so that way he can revive and have the power to control and also because he actually wanted her to be part of the throne so she could become the next emperor but Ray refuses so anyway so then um, the battle begins um, inside the, the lair you know, both Ray and, and Ben had to fight against all these um, emperors around. And then, while the entire crew is about to fight against, so Lindo actually helped in. Um, they all, surprisingly enough, he brought in the Millennium Falcon and actually saved uh, both Finn and Janna. So now, Ray, on the other hand, well, just begin to hear voices from all the other Jedi Masters from all the previous films so now you'll be able to hear all the familiar um, audio uh, clips that if you're familiar with the rest of the franchise so she gets up and she's ready to fight against uh, Palpatine before and finally you know he now destroys the rest of the emperors and now everyone for the sake of it will end up becoming free Ben on the other hand just got thrown away by Palpatine by using the force and went straight into the cliff but he came up um, came by he was already dying so what what this this happened well Ray apparently um, almost died or was about to so what he did was he was about to heal her all of her runes and hoping that she'll be revived and she'll be alive and then next thing you know she actually kisses him and then he dies in a pretty awkward uh, scene uh, so now the Resistance had destroyed the remainders of the Palpatine Armada and the entire galaxy had rise up against the First Order and now they celebrate with Rey, yep, the entire crew had celebrated completely and while Rey somehow visits uh, Luke's abandoned childhood home on Tatooine and buries the, the lightsabers of, the, of Skywalker having to build her own and that's where we meet an old passerby telling her what's her name and she reveals her name Ray Skywalker yeah oh and just to note though that yes we do get to see you know Luke Skywalker as a ghost just when when Ray was actually throwing the lightsaber into the burning uh, the burning falcon and that's when he was telling him about where to find the the lightsaber of Leia oh boy we also do get to see the ghost of Leia at the end too so oh, this movie's a mess a complete mess 
I mean, it has so many plot holes, so many confusion plots. The characters, uh, given the dialogue they were going for, are poorly written. I couldn't believe it. This is a perfect way to not only end the franchise this way, or perhaps maybe ending the series of the saga, but also because, you know, maybe Disney and Lucasfilm Limited will probably continue to do some more properties of other Star Wars stories if they continue to go on on their quests in, in the 2020s. I mean, already we have the, the new series, The Mandalorian. Yeah, that's on Disney Plus, which I haven't seen yet. But I guess it's safe to say that it's definitely the worst of the franchise, the worst of the series, and it just—I just felt completely betrayed. That's what I felt. I was so angry, frustrated, deplorable, flabbergasted, or any other kind of words I could describe. For this movie, I just don't understand. I mean, this is coming from a guy who actually did enjoy The Force Awakens. You know, at least this was a start of the franchise, and this was going to be part of the, the new trilogy. And it was nice to see all the original characters back again, even though they're now older and wiser, and hoping that together with new characters, that this is going to be a new um, chapter, and it's going to be the best out of both worlds, okay? I mean, sure, it won't top the original trilogy as opposed to the the prequels, but hey, at least, you know, we're going to find a new adventure that's going to go around without being, you know, a copycat or whatever. I mean, yes, The Force Awakens had its problems, but I still enjoy the movie with the visual effects and the action scenes and and the characters that I got to know of, but I do wish it was written better. I mean, I'm just hoping that's the case. <clears throat> but killing off the original characters really pissed me off. Starting with Han Solo, and then Luke Skywalker for The Last Jedi, and now Leia Organa. And I, I know, because this is the last film that Carrie Fisher had to deal with, because they had to borrow unseen footages uh, directly from the previous films. I mean, now that she passed away in 2016, so they also had to try to find ways to put it together before her character dies. So even I knew about that, too. And I was afraid Chewie was going to suffer the same fate, and I'm like, no, please no. But thank God he lives, but it just sucks, man. He does get a medal, for all the work that he had to deal with, I don't know how, but somehow, hey, at least he did what he can. Uh, yes, they did brought back um, Rose Tico, which eventually got just a minute or two screen time, just giving some shitty dialogue. I mean, there's even one scene where, yeah, one Resistance uh, crew uh, just came by just to perform what Ray is is finding, you know, because she was already there with, with the rest of her group to find the Wayfinder. And they're finding that they're in danger, but then it's like, you know, Rose Tico's like saying, um, be more specific, or something like that. And I, I was ready to tell her to shut the hell up. I'm like, really, man? That pissed me off. Now I can see why people hate this character so much. I mean, no wonder she was getting targeted with online harassment, uh, which I felt bad for her for that. She didn't deserve it. It's her character that sucks ass. So it's not the actress's fault. It's just they. I can't believe they had to go. They had to rid her character like, like a complete ass. Um. Um. Uh, um. Now, are there positive notes I can think of, if I can? <laughs> well, before I have to get to the negative or so. Well, I'll say this, though. I didn't mind uh, Zorai Bliss, um, played by Carrie Russell. and I, I wish she had plenty of screen time, though, but I, it was really nice. Um, 
because I love Kara Russell, and if you know, we do get to see her reveal uh, during that one point of the scene, and I kind of like how she bickers with Bolt with Paul. So I thought that was pretty funny. It's almost like the bickering of Han Solo and and uh, Leia Organa before they fell in love. <laughs> so yeah, I know it kind of echoes that. Um, it was nice to see Billy D. Williams again, uh, reprising the role of Lando Carissian. It was great to see him, even though it does feel like a cameo at times. I mean, we get to see him during the first act, but then we get to see him during the middle and the last. So, And I'm glad that this character didn't die, thank goodness. But it was really cool to see him again after all these years. Um... Ian McDiamond reprising his role of Palpatine, and yes, he also have a Dark City, a Dark City, as to join in, um, which is funny. That, which I I thought that was totally unnecessary, and this is going to be the negative part of the side. Why bring back Palpatine? That's like bringing back uh, Henry Kane in Poltergeist Free. Unnecessary, you know. They should just focus on a different uh, villain this time, you know. Why couldn't they do that? You know, I mean, it was nice that they got uh, a different general, which sadly I wish he was in all three of the. Which sadly I wish he was in the fir he was in the Force Awakens and and the the Last Jedi for that matter, and that was played by Richard E. Grant, and I love him, and and if you ask me, he's a better general than General Hux. If you think about it, to me, he's just basically a spy. But incredibly annoying too. <laughs> so what's the point? <sighs> I know, man. There's a lot of flashbacks going around to what we find out the reveal. It just to me it doesn't make any sense. But I know that's what the writers came up with. Um uh, yes, the pacing drags completely, I mean, for its running time, but hey, they had to go there for the story. Um, the battle scenes were pretty boring, though. I couldn't believe how bored I was. Usually, you know, when, when it comes to the Star Wars films, you know, you want to have fun. You know, you love the action scenes. You love to see the battle between the Resistance and the and the First Order, and or the light saber battle scenes between uh, the hero and the villain like or at this rate the heroine and the villain the conflict that's what I wanted in films like this and the film does have its funny moments I'll give you that you know such as the scene where Chewbacca was playing a game with Poe and Finn and apparently he cheated or the, the scene where C-3PO's memory is lost, but apparently he got restored by R2-D2, <laughs> so that was interesting. Or, hell, <laughs> some of the whole bickering between Poe and and um, Zoe, or, or, or at this rate, <laughs> um, you know, when BB-8 actually restored a, a new robot, um, so apparently he became friends, so <laughs> that was pretty cute, I'll give you that. Um, and I wish there were more n moments with uh, Finn and Jonna. I mean, there should have been more of that too, because at least now they they would have connect together. To me, you know, they actually have more chemistry than than him with uh, Rose Tico. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, who needs her? I'll take her instead. And she actually is a great fighter as well. But all I could say, though, was that the cast and crew that worked so hard with all the performances they had to choose, with all the scripts they had to read, you know, at least they were with us. And for those who passed on, I mean, at least, you know, they'll always be remembered for all the valuable work that they have done. So that's all I could say for that alone. But that's the thing. Star Wars is supposed to be a fun space adventure. You know, that's a mixture of fairy tales and um, Western films. Uh, joining in with uh, 
Akara Kusawa films because it's inspired by all of that. You know, with George Lucas on the team, you know, bringing the characters to life. And you love these characters. You know, you root for them. And you also love the villains, too. You can actually root for them as well. <laughs> and it's just sad that now it has to drag on for this particular series. With some... Because they're trying to find out some better ideas to, to make it work. And they failed. Because... Not only that, but then they had to focus on, you know, PC culture, you know, dragging in. And they also had to throw in some SJW uh, or any of this, the force is female bullshit that I'm hearing. Which to me sounds completely sexist. I mean, Disney's like forcing this crap down her throats. You know, with all the money making in the world, I mean, they, they really, uh, they really ruined it completely. And that's not what I want in this series. I wanted this to be fun, not boring. And that's what happened. So, I mean, geez, already, because, you know, they had to sell so many merchandising with these characters. And what's worse is that they're not selling well. You know, like... I could definitely see people not picking up uh, a Ray Dow or even a Rose Tico Dow as opposed to the other characters. You know? And I just wish they had given um, some of the supporting characters uh, some more background story too. You know, they treated Finn like crap. I don't understand because I wanted to know about his background story. I want to know about all the other background stories between the characters like Paul, Damien, and the rest. But it just seems totally rushed. But I guess maybe they just didn't want this to be three hours long. To be the exact. So they wanted it to be two hours and a half of the running time. They, they just want to go really quick. Just like that. I mean, I'll say one thing though. It was nice that we got to see Harrison Ford reprising his role. But that's only on a quick distant memory of Ben. So, that could have done better. Um, we, it's nice to see uh, Mark Hamill reprising his role of Luke Skywalker again as a ghost. I mean, Leia at least, you know, trying to give a few min minutes of screen time before she becomes a ghost. Well, hey, it's just nice to see her one last time. But I feel like they're not paying any respect to her since she committed suicide for no apparent reason, but maybe because, maybe just to save uh, Ben, I guess. <sighs> oh boy. And now that both uh, Ben, which I'm sorry I didn't care for the character at first. I, I, I mean, I wanted to like the character, Kylo Ren, but the moment he killed Han just pisses me off, and I hate him ever since. And and that's what pisses me off about this guy. And and he, he's full of shit. You know, he's totally wooden. And I, I wish he had a deserving death, but I know, I know. No, it has to go this way. This route. I I don't know what JJ Abrams was thinking, as opposed to the writers and Kevin Kennedy producing. It's just really sad. I mean, I'll say this though. The original trilogy will always be the best. The prequel trilogy, I mean, give or take, I mean, at least it has its... At least, you know, there are a lot of great moments in that film. A lot of action scenes and... The story may drag, but at least it'll get better as once we get to the final, the final um, act of the trilogy alone. So before we all know how this happens next, because it connects to it, and then we get the spin-offs too, like Rogue One, which I love. To me, that's the real Star Wars film that would have worked together with the original trilogy because it's part of that. Solo, on the other hand. 
I hated that film. I was completely bored. You know, I knew I had a bad feeling about this. So they thought this was a good idea to have a um, an origin story of him before we actually do get to know him. So, and that sucks. And then they had to throw in all this other political bullshit and all this SJW crap to ruin such a good movie. I mean, come on, what were they thinking? That's what I didn't want to see. So. Uh, I still haven't seen The Mandorian yet, which is on Disney+. Plus. I guarantee you that it is way better than than Solo and and even this movie as opposed to the dark as opposed to the last jedi yeah cuz the last jedi was a disappointment of the series you know despite of its moments I'll give you that but it had a lot of problems I mean Ryan Johnson must have went completely out of his league out of his mind coming up with all this utter garbage that he throws in into the story and it just feels like an insult and it ruins the the impact of the story and they had to make Rose Tico annoying like you wanted to trust her but she's acting like your typical uh, bitch that's sad man I don't know man they, they just fuck everything up so badly and I know I'm going on and on with this well the fact that it's already making money at the box office, and even though I thought they were gonna, f you know, lose its profit, well, either way. Well, this, well, it did have some nice cinematography by Dan Mindell, and it did have a nice score, even though some of them were not that memorable by John Williams. But it's all that matters. And that's why it became the worst of the franchise next to Solo. And I definitely put this on my worst list. 19 to be exact. So, I'm sorry folks. And I'm sorry that I'm taking so goddamn long, but that's how upset I am with this movie. So, screw this film. This is, this is basically a downfall of the franchise. So anyway, that's Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker and I give the film one star. Closer to zero stars, okay? I'm sorry, but it's it's really bad. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and well let's hope the force may be with you for all eternity. Bye.